Hi guys, this is Monte Cristo with ggchronicle.com and I'm here with Salsi from Epic and he's had a hell of a tournament so far as I'm sure you guys know and just doing a great job playing a little Swain, you know, playing a little Vlad, playing a lot of Kennen and um, I guess I, I'm, unfortunately you guys lost but I'd love to get your impressions kind of on the last series with TSM. Uh, what in particular did you think changed between your first match with TSM and then your second three games, second set of three games in the finals there? Um, I, I honestly think it really does all come down to Maokai and their lane switching on us because Maokai just does too big of a threat in his jungle ganks and if he's going to gank you mid with a flash and twist advance, even if you flash away, you're going to probably die to their AP. And another problem is when I'm forced out of mid to lane like top or somewhere against the wrong stuff. Like I can Kennen and Vlad top solo, but if they do 2v1 on me top, then I'm already behind. Or if I'm just like mid and I stay mid, I usually hold my lane, hold my own and don't lose it. But when I'm forced out of it against uneven matchups, then I have issues with that. And other than that, like every lane in this matchup, we just picked poorly and like pretty much every lane would lose pretty much. So Yeah, it was tough to see you guys do that after you had such success earlier in the tournament. Uh, w did you expect the odd one to jungle Maokai? And I, I mean, do you think that you would try something else now if given another few games to play against him? Is there anything you think you guys could have done in order to eliminate that twisted advanced threat? Um, honestly, to ban it, um, I told them since like game one, I was like, we should ban Maokai, you guys don't understand the threat. Like, I'm, I had to change my gameplay because of his ganks. I told my team that, but they don't see it because top lane's a bit tankier than in mid lane is, and bot lane it's 2v1, like a Maokai gank's usually seen because they have people warning for them all the time. But as mid, even I don't usually most people don't get words that early on their first buy, and you can't ward both sides, so there's always an open spot most cases early. And his ganks are even pre five. You're probably gonna die if they combo it, especially against the LeBlanc. She's always gonna get close enough without using flash to do a combo on you. So, like, there's not much that you can do against Maokai. And I told my team like it's even Dan said after going against the Maokai jungle, he's like it's too much pressure. You can't deal with it. You have to change your gameplay style when you're against that. And it's the same thing with Ram Ramus. Ramus and Maokai, their ganks are just too strong. They put too much pressure on you. And you have to change your play style because of that jungle. And I think what we learned is, even if they had Maokai, what we did learn is we'd have to ward his jungle and always know where he is, because we never knew. It seemed like as well as your own jungle, because the counter jungling, especially that last game against your blue, seemed really devastating. And uh, I was curious, too, about your picks and bans. Um, based on what happened in your first uh, best of three series, you guys repeatedly banned Tristana. And I guess I was a little confused by that because it seemed to me by the time Game 3 rolled around, it, your uh, kind of vain Taric uh, combo really shut down uh, Chaox's Tristana. And so I was kind of confused why you repeatedly banned her. Did you, do you have any insight on that? Um, it's not much my insight, no. The thing is, just Chaox himself as a player just never misses CS. And given Tristana who scales so, way, uh, scales so well late game, it's just, that's like the one champ, him, like Kog'Maw and Trist, they didn't even pick Cogs, which I'm pretty happy, but Tristan, especially into late game. You don't really see TSM losing like 20 minutes like us in Surrender. Like they're always pushing it 30, 35, 40 minutes, really good games from TSM like most of the time. And that's where Tristana kicks in, picks it up. Like she's most effective with Last Whisper and she just tears people apart. And I don't think we can really deal with that as much as other things like honestly I wouldn't have minded Tristana with the lane but it's other people's preferences like I'd rather ban Mayo Kai obviously <laughs> I hate Mayo I just can't deal with that yeah I had another question about uh, kind of what happened because we saw a lot of the same picks in the in the second half the second series but uh, of course with Maokai being the, the main difference and with the LeBlanc mid in game one of your first series, you really took out Reginald's LeBlanc. I mean, you especially stopped her from farming, and you, you, know, you really gimped her late game. And I think that that was a lot of the reason why you won game one, is because LeBlanc was effectively useless by the time that you reached that late game stage that you say that TSM likes to get, go, get to. So what happened with LeBlanc this time that differed from that, that first game? Do you think the Heimerdinger was not the best pick mid, or was it just, the, again, the Maokai coming in for those ganks? It was the Maokai, because <laughs> I actually, it's not 100% that though, but it's a big part of it. Like, I couldn't get burst down, but I might have been able to, like, ignite for Maokai, but I think it is a lot has to do with Maokai, because he's just 
the, his presence on the map, you have to play differently because he's going to flash, twist, advance you, and you're going to get hit by it and rooted no matter what. Like, I think what we could have done differently is maybe our mid could have gotten cleanse. But to sacrifice cleanse for twist, advance for your early game, then it's, like, lacking in other places. Like, huge just for that. So, I don't know. We would never ran cleanse because this isn't the new patch where cleanse is a lot better. So... I have to say, I think a lot of viewers are probably really excited that you were playing Kennen. Is this a champ that you like to go to frequently? Is this one of your favorites? Do you have a favorite, or do you tend to kind of go for more of the swing? Actually, Kennen is my absolute favorite champ right now. I had him, I've been playing him in solo queue. I climbed rank one with him twice, one during season one and season two, or pre-season two. And I feel like his potential as an AP carry isn't really known by most people. And I don't think there's a lot of Kennen players that understand what he's capable of. But he also has like a his really strong sustain, and I actually did learn this tournament. There are about two counters that to Kennen, where as well as before this tournament, I would have said there's no counter to him. But I do know two now, and we did ban one of them against TSM because I always wanted to play Kennen against them. But the thing is about Kennen is if you're losing your late game or your early game like we did TSM, then Kennen's pretty weak. He needs to get his farm in. He needs to hit like around nine or eleven where my runes start kicking in. My Items especially in my flash, I can flash ult on people, and that's like the most effective is on team fights around that area. But early game, he's really weak, and it's pretty much that. I just don't think people understand his capabilities yet, uh, and I'm kind of glad because Kenan, I've gone against one Ken who played him properly in solo queue, and it was pretty tough. And I know like climbing in the ladder people would know when I'm queuing and they ban cannon against me because it's such a big threat when played properly. So you said that with cannon you your runes kind of scale up so you, you hit your stride and kind of the mid game so do you mind telling us what rune you I assume you use per level runes and what rune set do you use on That's them? That's actually the thing people always question about my rune build is I use per level energy regen which nobody does they might put in like health or armor but that's why I tell them it's like the way I play it is I sure can farm or I just farm hard one through nine and then those runes start kicking in especially with the new masters you get ten more energy which helps it even more but I find it pretty vital because that one shuriken or that quicker lightning ball could mean more energy for more stuff earlier stuns so I mean armor is not going to do me any good in lane because I don't take damage I usually farm with shurikens in lane so that would probably be the best yellow because the regen I mean that's what you need to use your spells so I have to say, I didn't expect you to say that. <laughs> Nobody expects you to argue it. They argue. Like, I don't agree with that. Or they say something, but... I think it's tough to argue with your kid in performance <laughs> this tournament, for sure. And you certainly showed that it's viable at the top level of play. Uh, I noticed, too, that in there was a lot of... Uh, Rain Man teleport ganks in the final three games, and I think that mobility really helped TSM out. If you were to do it again, what would you change about? I I, I have noticed that you guys may have been overextending on those, trying to get those kills, and Rain Man would just pop in and surprise you guys. Uh, did you think you needed to play more conservatively, or do you think there was a better? You needed to pick different champs, or you know, he just seemed to be everywhere. Um, honestly, some of the times it came down to our top not teleporting. That's what it came down to a lot of times, because even though he teleported in one of the ganks, he was like 20%, but we didn't have Singe there to pressure, and LeBlanc was already coming, and we knew LeBlanc was coming, and I was down there, I think I, I did end up going down there, but it didn't matter, because they had numbers on us, and all we needed was our Singe there. So it came down to like us not knowing, or not utilizing teleport, and that's always a big problem for our team, is we don't utilize teleport, and if we do, it's for Dragon, but we never counter gank with teleport. Well, you have to say you guys in that last game did a really good job of controlling Dragon. Um, so, going going along back to the, the last game there, with your picks and your strategy, we saw you play Vlad, which you guys hadn't played in this tournament before. So what, what kind of strategy were you hoping to play against them? And uh, was it successful and they outpicked you, or did you not execute it quite right? Uh, can you give us some a little insight on that? Well, my whole thing was I thought I was going to be laying against Yorick. And they ended up switching it up on me, which it's not really a big deal for Vlad. It's just in need levels. That's what Vlad's early game is probably like the worst thing in the game to a certain point. And I just need like level 7, 9, some cooldown reduction and lifesteal and I can hold my own. Even like last hitting at your tower as Vlad um, without ties of blood or higher ranks of transfusion, you can. And I missed a lot of CS out of that. So my early game CS was pretty like bad and weak. But if I were to be against Yorick, I did compensate to get cloth armor and five potions because I thought it would be Yorick for sure. 
but they end up switching up on me, and that's where it, we got messed. Up, we get messed up a lot by the lane switches, and we don't compensate for it. it happens a lot to us against DSM, especially. I have to say, one of my favorite parts of this tournament was uh, in the game one, where you got uh, ten health potions as Swain against LeBlanc. I thought that was just a really brilliant adaptive move, and not something that I think uh, Reginald expected you to do. And you really like punished him for his. Uh, over ag overly aggressive play in that first game, and I, I really liked uh, how you kind of countered that lane. It's, it's too funny thing, though. I'm sorry to interrupt you, oh, no, no, but no, I want to stay on this topic. Is uh, Dyrus had told me he's uh, he knew they've been playing LeBlanc, I knew too, and Dyrus was like, They might pull it out on you, and I was like, All right, I'm not really scared of it because I actually tried this before his tournament. Andy expected me to get Andy's Reginald, Reginald expected me to get to like that many potions, he really did. So I did this at first with Cassidy, and I have the MR for my passive like 5% or something, and I ran 18 MR runes and 10 potions. So he, it was to be expected, so maybe he didn't expect I'd do it on Swain, but I did the same exact room book, just 10 potions, and I didn't have the passive. And I even like told him in our hotel room, is I was like, I know you're thinking about doing this tournament. I was like, you're going to try pulling out the LeBlanc. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to do the same thing I did. I'm just going to get 10 potions. He's like, oh, all right, really? I was like, yeah, dude, I'm going to do it. Like, And he tested me, and I did the same thing, and it, I, I just, the way that it works with uh, LeBlanc is you just don't die early. <laughs> so going back to that Maokai, do you think that TSM didn't pull out the Maokai in your first set because they were trying to surprise you or trying to surprise opponents later on? Or do you think they went back last night and really thought about the kind of picks that they were doing and maybe practiced a bit with Maokai and then came back with it? Um, they played, I don't think Odwin was that confident with it quite yet in his tournament play, but once they used it once on us and it was so useful, like effective, and I've seen him do it before in Zolo and it's always pretty scary, but after that first game and after the Dignitas, they just wanted mail every opportunity they could, which is why like, I was like, let's ban this, it's too much, but my team wasn't for it, so we tried dealing with it, and we learned it wasn't going to work. Even, think about it, it's not just his twisted bands, it's his ult too. He throws down his ult on a cannon ult and already do like a lot less damage. So it's just a pretty good counter all around. Yeah, that AOE negation on that ult is uh, pretty good. Uh, so what's uh, what's next for you guys with Epic? Uh, what tournaments are you looking forward to? What do you think you have to work on? Um, what's next is um, we have qualifiers for Ukraine, but the only problem is we don't know if we have the funding, but we still want to try qualifying. Maybe we can get somebody to fund us for it. And as for anything else, I don't know of any recent tournaments. I'm the kind of person that I barely know of anything going on and they tell me the last minute I don't have any idea. I just kind of do my own thing. They're like, oh hey, we need you on this day or this is planned like a week or during that week. I'm like, all right, I'll make room for it because a lot of times qualifiers on the weekends and stuff and I don't like to be home during the night and I might have just like throw my weekend to a qualifier and I need, I know like that week, I'm like, damn, I guess I'm being going to be home this weekend for this qualifier, but it's well worth it. I mean, for this for this tournament, I was on computer all day. That qualifier it was a really long one, but it was well worth it. I've had a blast. We got second place, made money. So that's all I know. <laughs> Hard to argue with that. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Salsi, for interviewing us again. I'm Monte Cristo with ggchronicle.com. This is Salsi from Epic. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. I'm sorry you got second place, but I'm good happy. work. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks.